Hello everyone, welcome to GK Today. All the videos of GK Today are absolutely free and available on GK Today's YouTube channel. And if you are looking for interactive quizzes in text and also their solutions, please download GK Today's Academy Android app. We have several free and paid courses in that app. Now this particular series is of 60 videos. And in each video, we are going to discuss select 15 questions and we shall also do 500 test questions after end of this series. Now let's start with the questions on Indian polity. So the first question is, which part of the Indian constitution deals with amendment? You have the following options and the correct answer is option A that is part 20th. So part 20th of the constitution of India has only one article that is article 368 that deals with the amendment of the constitution. The next question is, the amendment of the constitution can be initiated in which of the following? Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, State Assemblies. You have to select the correct options from the quotes given below. The correct answer is option B. See, a constitution amendment bill can be introduced in any house of the parliament. So, a bill for the purpose of amendment of constitution cannot be introduced in any state legislature in any state legislature but it can be introduced in any of the house of the parliament either in the Lok Sabha or in the Rajya Sabha. The next question is which among the following is true regarding the amendments of the constitution with provisions which affect the federal character of the constitution. So you have the following options and the correct answer is option C that is they can be amended by not only two-third majority of the parliament but also ratification by at least half of the states. See the amendments which affect the federal character of the constitution need to be passed by special majority of the parliament and also need ratification by half of the state legislatures. The next question is from which constitution India has borrowed the provisions related to amendment constitution. Now you have the following options and the correct answer is option B that is South Africa. So, Indian constitution has borrowed two features, procedure for amendment of the constitution and election of members of Rajya Sabha from South African constitution. So, the next question is, a constitutional amendment bill has also provisions pertaining to imposition, abolition, remission, alteration or regulation of a tax. Now, which of the following statements would hold correct for such a bill? You have the following options and the correct uh, answer is option D. That is, this bill can originate in either Rajya Sabha or Lok Sabha. See, a constitutional amendment bill is not treated as a money bill even if all its provisions attract Article 110.1 for the reason that such amendments are governed by Article 368 which overrides the provisions regarding money bills. Now, this means that such a bill can originate in any house of the parliament. The next question is, which of the following statement is incorrect about a constitutional amendment bill? And the correct answer is option A, that is, a president can withhold his assent to the bill but cannot return the bill for reconsideration of the parliament. See, the first statement is incorrect because president can neither withhold his assent to the bill nor return the bill for reconsideration of the parliament. Third statement is correct because a constitutional amendment bill which seeks to amend the federal character of the constitution requires to be ratified by the state legislatures. The next question is, in which house the amendments to the constitution of India can be initiated? You have the following options and the correct answer is option D, that is either house of a parliament. See, the amendment to the constitution of India can be initiated in either house of parliament in India. Now, it has been enumerated in article 368.2 of the constitution of India. And the process of constitutional amendment has been taken from the constitution of South Africa. Now, the next question is, which part and article deals with amendment to the constitution? Now you have the following options and the correct answer is option A that is part 20th article 368. So the powers of parliament to amend the constitution and its procedure is enumerated in article 368 in part 20th of the constitution. 
Further, it states that a parliament may amend by way of addition, variation or repeal any provisions of the constitution in accordance with the procedure that are laid down for the purpose. Now the next question is, how much majority is required to amend federal provisions in the constitution of India? You have the following options and the correct answer is option D that is a special majority of each house of parliament plus ratification by half of the states with simple majority. See, if a bill seeks to amend the federal provisions of the Constitution of India, it must be passed by both the Houses of Parliament with a special majority and must also be ratified by legislatures of half of the states with simple majority. Now, the next question is, in which case the Supreme Court ruled that the Parliament cannot amend the basic features of the Constitution of India? Now, you have the following options and the correct answer is, Option C, that is, case of Nandabharti case. Now, Article 368 deals with the powers of Parliament to amend the Constitution and its procedure. And in the case of Nandabharti case of 1973, the Supreme Court ruled that the Parliament cannot amend those provisions which form the basic structure of the Constitution. Moving ahead with the next question. So the question is which of the following statements are correct regarding constitutional amendment bill? Your first statement is the president must give his assent to a constitutional amendment bill. And the second statement is in case of disagreement between the two houses of parliament, there is a provision for joint sitting. Now you have to select the correct statement from the options given below. And the correct answer is option A. That is only the first statement is correct. C. A constitutional amendment bill must be passed by each house of parliament separately. And in case if there is any disagreement between the two houses, then there is no provision for holding a joint sitting of the two houses in the constitution for the purpose of deliberation and the passage of the bill. Now the next question is, which amendment made it obligatory on the president to give his assent to a constitutional amendment bill? You have the following options and the correct answer is option B that is 24th. So the 24th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1971 made it obligatory for the president to give his assent to a constitutional amendment bill and he can neither withhold his uh, and he can neither withhold the assent nor return the bill for reconsideration. Now the next question is in which case the constitutional validity of the first amendment act was questioned. And the correct answer is option A, that is Shankari Prasad case of 1951. See, the question whether fundamental rights can be amended by the parliament came for consideration of the Supreme Court within a year of the constitution coming into force. And the constitutional validity of the First Amendment Act of 1951, which curtailed the right to property, was challenged in the Shankari Prasad case of 1951. The next question is, in which case the Supreme Court laid down the doctrine of basic structure. You have the following options and the correct answer is option D, that is case of Nandabharti case. See, in the case of Nandabharti case of 1973, the Supreme Court of India laid down a new doctrine of the basic structure or we can say the basic features of the constitution. It ruled that the power of parliament under article 368 does not enable it to alter the basic structure of the constitution of India. And the last question for this video is that which of the following are included in the basic structure of the constitution of India. So you have the following supremacy of the constitution, judicial review, principle of equality, free and fair elections. Now you have to select the correct option from the quotes given below. And the correct answer is option D that is all of the above. See, the Supreme Court is yet to define what constitutes the basic structure of the Constitution. So, from the various judgments, the following features mentioned above have emerged as basic features of the Constitution of India. Thank you so much. So, this was all for today's video and we hope that you like our uh, new initiative. So, please do provide your feedback in our comment section. And stay tuned for the more upcoming videos. Thank you.